This little story starts in 2006, when the first Far Cry speedrun of the entire game was released by Vladimir Kanu Semenov, with a time of 1 hour and 7 minutes. Back then, segmented speedruns were the norm, so this speedrun was done in 21 segments, one for each level and an extra one. Some skips that involved abusing the game's geometry were already known at the time, but were actually not allowed to be used on the old Speed Demos archive site, which was sort of a speedrun.com predecessor. However, for the 13th level in the game, Cooler, there were no skips. This level was played pretty much as intended, so let's go through it together quickly. The level starts in a cargo elevator and a big boy in front of the door you need to go through. You can easily get past him and then continue on to the next room, killing a few mercs and invisible trigens. Then you're supposed to go to the end of the long corridor to get a keycard to progress further in the level. After you backtrack and unlock the keycard door, there is another long corridor to go through, where you need to kill some trigens because they are fast and even on easy difficulty they will kill you in two or three hits. Then you get into this octagonal central room where you go left first to find and disable a security switch for the door across the octagonal room. You make your way through the facility, all the while killing trigens and taking care to properly manage your stamina. You flip the switch and then make your way to the elevator which takes you down into the warehouse and then make your way to the mutagen room. Then you turn a valve and flood the entire room and swim into a ventilation shaft on top. After crawling through the vent for what feels like an eternity, you make your way through the flooded rooms where you find Val battling two trigens. You help Val kill the trigens and the level ends. The initial time it took Canoe to finish Cooler was 4 minutes and 35 seconds. Now, it's important to mention that the FPS you run the game at dictates how fast the mutagen room gets flooded. And since this run was done on 30 FPS, we can approximate that it would have taken about 10 seconds less for the room to flood when we take into account that nowadays we play on 175 FPS. So let's say the final time was 4 minutes and 25 seconds. The strategy for this level was simple and it would not change for a long time because there were almost no speedruns done for this game from that point until 2018. The first development in the level was made by me in May of 2018 when I accidentally managed to trigger the swimming glitch and the ventilation at the end of the level. It works like this. When you're in the part of the vent which is the right depth and then go prone, hold crouch and stand up, you will initiate the swimming glitch. That means that you'll be able to move underwater water at the speed at which you can move on land. What is also amazing is that while you're underwater, you can sprint at the speed of sprinting on land and your stamina bar drains at a pace as if you were just underwater, making you able to sprint swim for a long time. This shaved off approximately 15 seconds from the level and the glitch was not hard to do. So from the initial 4 minutes and 25 seconds from canoe, we cut the level down by 15 seconds because of the swimming glitch, but also just overall better gameplay saved an additional 35 seconds on top of that because we started to understand how to rush through levels without getting killed either by landing good headshots or using flashbangs for the triagents and similar strategies. This brought the time to about 3 minutes and 35 seconds which is almost a minute faster than the initial run. After that it would take another 3 months for an improvement to surface which was one that was quite obvious. One of the game's enthusiasts posted a video on YouTube and the video asked the question. When you take Take the elevator to the warehouse, why do you then go upstairs into the mutagen room when you can just flip a switch and open the main gate? Well, nobody really had an answer to that question. During the aforementioned three months in between new strategies were discovered, the full game run had come a long way and got improved from barely under one hour to 54 minutes. With all that, somehow we completely overlooked this extremely obvious time save of another 10 to 15 seconds. Well, sometimes it takes a third party to come in and show you something right in front of your nose. So, on top of the 3 minutes 35 seconds the level was at, we saved an additional 15 seconds with a new route. But because some time had passed, we also found more optimal ways of dealing with enemies, managing stamina and the level time dropped down to just above 3 minutes, to around 3.05, 3.10. Then, after I got a 53 minute world record in August of 2018, I took a break from speedrunning and did not post any runs for a while.
So time passed and in the spring of 2019 I decided to pick up where I left off. In the meantime a new strategy was found for the level boat which saved almost 4 minutes. So in May of 2019 I decided it was time to figure out some kind of a new strategy for cooler as well. Yeah, but there's not much left of this place. Then you don't have a lot to search, do you? I knew that the only criteria for the level ending was to kill the two Trigens in one of the flooded rooms where you meet Val. So I started to look into the possibility of somehow damaging and killing those Trigens from across the map. At the start of the level, there's this hole in the ceiling for whatever reason. And I thought, because the room where the two Trigens are is actually quite close to the start of the level, maybe I could shoot an AG nade through the hole in the ceiling and that nade could possibly just fall into the room where the trigens are and at least damage them to wake them up so that Val can kill them. Or best case scenario kill them instantly and finish the level. So I started trying it and every time I felt I was getting close I was just slightly unable to get the angle to have the nades fly into the room properly. If I was gonna make this work the nades needed to land through the wall of the room but not the ceiling since the ceiling had collision. I spent an ungodly amount amount of hours trying this, more than I'd like to admit, and I've not been able to damage the Trigens at all. I was pretty heartbroken. I thought this was such an amazing idea and then for it to be so close, yet just far away enough so it can't be done. It felt crushing. I'm not even getting paid for this crap. Well, it took me a few days to recover from this idea in such a way that I finally let it go and started looking elsewhere. And looking elsewhere was a great decision. Right after I unlocked the keycard door and got into the long corridor, I noticed this vent on the ceiling. So as I was in developer mode, I flew into it and realized that it was not closed off on the other side, but rather just led directly out of bounds. But how is I gonna get up there? It was just so high up. I know, I need something tall to stand on. So I started pushing items around in the level. I found this box and I started trying to grenade jump into the vent, but every time I tried, I could not boost myself high enough. So then I looked to the tallest object in the vicinity, which was this barrel just around the corner. I was eager to try it, but then quickly realized that it's very hard to push the barrel around and not knock it over. But I was persistent and I figured out a way to flip the barrel back up using this little slope. I tried the grenade jump a few times, but I was still not making it. So then I thought, maybe I can do a double grenade jump? I could throw a frag grenade and time it in such a way that as the frag explodes, I also fire an AG nade and use those two boosts to get myself into the vent. Conveniently, just before you get into this corridor, the three guys you kill to get the keycard give you full health and almost full armor, so stack would not be an issue. I started trying it and the timing was hard to pull off, but after some time, I actually managed to do a double grenade jump into the vent. Then I slowly learned the route to navigate to the last room and dropped in and killed the Trigens. From that point on, I shared my findings with the community and then it was on. Slowly, the strategy got optimized and a way of timing was found that makes it more consistent. Still, the most inconsistent part of this trick was pushing the barrel around. It was at this point some of the players kinda gave up on the game because the strategies were getting ridiculous and I don't blame them really. I knew we'd find a way to make this better and they would eventually return to get their PBs with newer strategies though. This skip was born in May of 2019 and best case scenario saved about 1 minute and 45 seconds. There was a bit of a random element to it because of having to maneuver the barrel around but it was definitely worth it. So from 3 minutes and 10 seconds, the level time dropped to about one and a half minute on average, effectively cutting the level time in half, which was pretty crazy. And so the first cooler skip was born. It took another year for an improvement to be found, but in late July of 2020, during the pandemic, I had an extra incentive to speedrun. So one day I just started messing around in cooler again. I was trying to clip out of bounds earlier in the level by using this turret to do something. I didn't even know what. I was just trying everything I could think of. I must have spent a good three hours just hopping on and off this turret, but nothing really came of it in the end. 
Then, as I slowly gave up because I was tired, I took a walk back to where I came from and noticed that by this shelf there were three boxes, two stacked and one single, and they looked like stairs to me, inviting me to somehow use them to clip out of bounds directly through the ceiling. So I started doing that. The thing was, this part of the corridor was almost directly above the last room where Val and the two trigens are. I started aligning the boxes in all kinds of ways and throwing a grenade underneath to propel the boxes upwards, which I hoped would put me out of bounds somehow. After about 10 or 15 minutes I managed to make something work and I threw a nade, it exploded and the boxes actually pushed me out of bounds. My jaw kind of dropped in that moment. I instantly tried replicating it and I did it a couple more times. It didn't really work every time but I was getting about half of my attempts to clip me out of bounds and I knew that was promising because if I was already at a 50% success rate how much more consistent can we actually get this if we have a setup for it. So I showed my findings to my fellow runners in the discord and sure enough within like two days we already had a viable setup for the full game run. In the meantime on the same day I discovered it I got an individual level run for cooler that was 36 seconds which at the time took over as the shortest level in the game. After a few months the average cooler in a full game any percent run was around 45 to 50 seconds which was beyond anything we thought could be possible in 2018. And this is how the strategy looks today as well with a small optimization of killing the trigens from out of bounds instead of dropping into the room first saving about three seconds. The world record holder for any percent does, in his segmented speedrun of the game, managed to get cooler down to 25 seconds, which is quite ridiculous to say the least. And here it is, the product of all these years of finding new strategies and working on them to create a well-executed 25 second run. Enjoy. Listen up Jack, you made it through the dockyard area, so you should be much better. And this is where the story of Cooler should have already ended, according to my original script. However, during the making of this video, to get proper gameplay b-roll, I had to replay the level and redo many of the skips and remind myself of some old strategies. During that process, I went into the CryEngine editor to record some footage like this really fast clock for example. While I was in the editor, I took a look at the end level triggers once again and noticed that there was a trigger for playing the last cutscene in the level, just outside of the last room. Somehow we never noticed this before and just assumed that the only way of ending the level is by killing the two trigens. However, if you just navigate out of bounds and touch this trigger, the cutscene starts playing and you can skip killing the two trigens and the three second delay before the cutscene starts normally. This was another optimization that would save about three or four seconds. So basically, working on this video made me find something else in Cooler and I'm pretty happy about that. This is exactly what I love about speedrunning. Just when you think that everything has been figured out, somehow, someway, someone will find something else. So now Naturally, after I found this, I wanted to use this strategy and get the individual level world record for Cooler and beat Doze's 25 second level from his segmented speedrun. However, I could not expect to save the whole 3 or 4 seconds, because in his segmented run of Cooler, at the start of the level, Doze already has frag grenades. In my statistics any percent run of Cooler, however, I do not have that luxury, and I have to actually pick up a grenade off this shelf, which wastes about 1 or 2 seconds. I still decided to try and beat him by as much as I can and what's quite funny is that this took barely any time and on the 5th of December after only 102 attempts and not even two hours of grinding I got this run on cooler. Once again and for real this time enjoy. Listen up Jack, you've made it through the dockyard area. Stop 
I hope you enjoyed this little journey of mine about Cooler. If you liked this video, write a comment. I'm open to any suggestions or any questions you might have. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you later at some point.